and welcome, Nerd and Tie listeners, to another Fortnite's episode of Nerd and Tie. My Huzzah. name is Professor Firsters, and as always with me are the phenomenal Nikazumi. Oh wow, I'm not last. <laughs> Again. <laughs> And this is and the a trend. I like this trend. Right behind you, right now. Quick, look or you'll miss him. Trey Dorn. I I exist, and even if my name is said last, I'm never the actual last. <laughs> he's he's first in our hearts, but oh, uh, I'll live you all. What oh, if you oh, really oh. did, Trey? Wouldn't you feel terrible? Uh, no, no, not because no, no, really. you'd be the one because I'd be alive. You'd be the winner. You'd be the winner. <laughs> you'd have won, <laughs> as it was foretold in the prophecy. Um, Trey is a prophet of doom. We've established this. We've in established he is. This is indeed a fact. But uh, no, gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, welcome. It was good to good to see you. Um, good to see both of you. Or at least hear Nick's me. voice. We can't see Nick right now, but I'm pretty sure Nick looks pretty see great Nick too. In our hearts. He's he's in Seriously, our mind's his, eye. His face is imprinted on everybody's heart. We had a special tattoo artist brought in specifically just for that. Mm. Um, it was gross. really uh, it was really uncomfortable. But uh, no, we've uh, it's a uh, man. A lot's happened in the last two weeks, guys. Uh, how you been though? How's everybody been? Uh, I just got off the road from being at a convention, and we'll talk about that later. That is coming up. Yeah. I was sick for a couple days, but as is nerd and tie tradition, I am not sick anymore. So, huzzah. <laughs> Has Nick been the only one of us that's never been <laughs> sick while recording? I He's got the best record at the very least. Uh, apparently, because like, me and Trey, you, you and I are, maybe have been sick about 33% of the time we've recorded. <laughs> and, Nick, and Nick's just like, I feel great, and I'm well, always running off to the bathroom, and Trey's just... I once, hanging on to life. I once did an episode after like getting no. I I had gotten zero like two hours like less than two hours of sleep the night before, and then worked a convention all day, and then gotten home, slept for five minutes, and then we did the episode. I remember that. Yeah, I do. That was, I do remember that. But uh, no, I think we're all healthy today, which is great. It's phenomenal that we're all healthy. Well, you know, if we aren't feeling well. It's just, yes. <laughs> just to annoy Nick at the beginning of the show. You know, I, I never listened to this. This is my first time hearing it. That's... I stay out too late. <laughs> Got nothing in my brain. That's what people say. Hey. You know, I, I want to point really out... That's what people say. Hey. <laughs> I want to point out that I was out at the mall days. yesterday, and I and I saw a a um, a sweater I was gonna buy for Nick. Uh, it was on discount, and it just said "Heartbreaker's gonna break," but I'm just gonna shake. And I really wanted to buy it for Nick and get it to him for Valentine's Day. So Nick, I might have your Valentine's Day present. <laughs> oh hey, you, you have, uh, what's uh, Amkey's uh, boring things policy? Because we could have a new segment right there. <laughs> It'll be just. It'll be like uh, it'll be like the top of the fourth wall, but with a sweater instead of a comic. Great. Great. All right, we got All we right. got a lot of to- we got a lot of stuff to talk about. And um, we can always we can always play that song multiple times. That can times be our that can be our episode. outro music. That'll be That's, pretty uh, good. For those of you who hadn't figured it out, that was a cover of "Shake It Off" that I performed in five minutes because I was bored. An incredibly on point cover. I'd like to point out but uh and uh, we'll link that we'll link an mp3 to that in the show notes for this episode it is well th- you can actually listen to the full thing on the website we posted a link to it yeah. uh because i was under i was homebound for the moment i'm like this is really <laughs> good and i just was like this is my story for the day um <laughs> but, uh, but uh folks we got a lot to talk about uh of course we're gonna we're gonna get the bad out of the way uh, with a trip to the DC Carnival of Sadness. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, we we talked about this back in September. Let's let's take a few months back and go all the way back to September when it was announced that the Supergirl series was going to be uh, was was being worked on and that it was going to happen, and that hadn't been assigned to a network yet. Hadn't been officially picked up when Trey made the offhand comment, it's going to be picked up by CBS. 
And we all laughed because, oh, what on earth would... that would be stupid. Stevie... Yeah, what would earth... be the worst possible thing. <laughs> what could CBS do with the Supergirl series? They're never going to do anything until it was announced that CBS was picking up the Supergirl series. Uh, and then I just offhandedly joked about how it was going to be either Chuck Lorre comedy of the laugh track. Or... On the upside, it's not. It's not, it's or it could have CBS potentially does. been a CBS crime procedural, which, <laughs> guess what? It's going to be a CBS crime procedural. Yes, during Gosh, a press dang it. during a press release, uh, the um, at a press event in Pasadena a couple Mondays ago on uh, January uh, the 11th, uh, it was uh, it was announced that Supergirl was going to essentially be a crime procedural. Uh, but don't worry, it's not going to be like the four different CSIs, the two different Criminal Minds, and the three different NCIS shows that are currently on you know, CBS. You know they're going to come out with a third Criminal Minds. Are you kidding me? No. After how badly <laughs> behavioral... But beha- They're going to go to the well again. Oh. Oh, God. Jeez. But the, the CBS said, don't worry, it's not going to be like those CBS shows, because it's going to be exactly like other CBS shows. Yes. Uh, uh, um, Entertainment chair, uh, chairwoman Nina Tassler revealed that the beauty of the show, uh, beauty of, uh, beauty of Supergirl, uh, beauty of, show, of it now is with shows like Good Wife and Madam Secretary, you can have serialized story elements woven into a case of the week. She's a crime solver, so she's going to have to solve a crime. She's going to get a bad guy. To be fair, if you break down, like, at least first season Arrow, isn't it also, like, a case of the week? It it is. It's very, very serialized. So, um, I mean... Week to week. But, like, you know, it's, you know, who's the bad guy this week our superhero takes down is not out... Like... Same producers have just did that twice because Flash, say, is, yeah, like that Flash too. is very monster of the week. It's yeah, unapologetically so. Oh, we're gonna get a second Weather Wizard on Flash. So are we? Okay, so yeah. The, well, they they mentioned gonna... there were two guys in that plane anyway in the first episode. So yeah, yep. well, like yeah, and it's gonna be the brother of the guy who died in the pilot. Of course, so. which is okay because I think we need Weather Wizard to stick around because he's a great. I love He's the fact a- that we're also going to get a the trickster episode is going to have two tricksters in it because Mark Hamill's in the Mark Hamill's playing the first trickster from the comics and he's being he's been in prison and he's being brought out to uh, catch a copycat who is got share, who is the second trickster from the comics. That's decently clever, though. I mean, you know, yeah, you, know, you can but use you- both versions of the character. And that's good and all, but that's Marvel who does things right. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. That's or, Flash. Oh, it's a Flash, but that's <laughs> on the CW. <laughs> that's the same producers I'm still... as Supergirl. Okay, I should mention that I've I'm I've had three hours of sleep between my two jobs. <laughs> um, disclaimer across. Flash a disclaimer below me that says I am sleep deprived at the moment. Ah, oh, it's great, but um, no, uh. I don't know, like I, I, but the b- with it being on CBS and it being the crime procedural that they're talking about, do we have anything to worry about that we might be getting CSI Metropolis? I... I'm going to be curious who they set up as like supporting characters, um, because I admittedly the the one version of Supergirl that I remember working really well was the Supergirl who appeared in the. Uh, in the uh, Paul Dini, uh, Bruce Tim animated universe, who on the plus side, if they wanted to do a crossover with Arrow, that version of Supergirl kind of had a little sister relationship with Oliver Queen. But on the other hand, most of her supporting cast were other characters from Superman. So, how? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Like, I, I mean, like, even, like, if you go back to Supergirl's roots, I mean, I guess, including the c- incredibly sexist, awkward, uh, original stuff, she's established in the context of, she is related to Superman, everything that she is going to do is going to be compared to Superman, because that's the guy who showed up on Earth first. And, 
in some ways, some of the more interesting things are her differentiating herself from Superman. So I guess she won't have that context to fight with, which could be a good thing or could be a bad thing. I don't know. Well, it'll it'll be interesting to see how much of the super family, I guess, is brought into into this. Come on, crypto. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would take crypto the super dog. You can do it, boy. <laughs> That would be great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's, but then we get a Chuck Lorre laugh track sitcom every time he's in the in the show. Gosh dang it. I'm that's just gonna, waiting for the product placement. Right? That's going to be so bad. I, oh, come on. We aren't even sponsored by Coke. No, we're sponsored by Playdia. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody, if Coke would like to sponsor us. We're willing to sell out. I'm just saying. Uh, we are whores. And a Toshiba true. laptop from 1999. For those <laughs> listening to the audio, I'm just pointing at things. But uh, no, uh, so so we know what what the Supergirl series on CBS is roughly going to be like. Uh, we also actually have a uh, Supergirl cast tentatively. Um, uh, Melissa uh, Ben Benoist 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 ben- 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 Depending Someone on else from it. Glee. Someone else from Glee is going to be a superhero. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, known for known for a character uh, um, that she played on Glee. Uh, of course, I've never seen Glee. I've, never seen, I've, I've, I've seen parts of Glee, but never a full episode. Nick, um, you ever watch Glee? I've never even I've never even seen parts of Glee. The so only none of us either. have any idea if she's any good or well cast or anything. The only thing no I know clue. about Glee was that one time that they uh, basically stole a Jonathan Colton re- arrangement of a song, and I laughed right. at that. But okay. it's, so, like, that's the thing is, here's an actress who has been on one of the most successful shows in the last decade, and none of us know if she's any good. I have uh, other things to not be watching, I guess. I don't know. I, <laughs> <laughs> I should ask my parents. They watch Glee. That's no the, wait, I'm sorry. They don't watch the scenes. They fast, fo- they DVR it and then fast forward to the songs. So they at least know if she's a good <laughs> singer and dancer. That's I, true. Nice. Yeah, they'll know if she sounds good when fed something. through auto tune. Um, <laughs> but uh, so so we've got her as as the tentative Supergirl. As uh, at least the last I saw, they were still kind of in in contracting details for that. Um, but the other big thing that I think is is good to know uh, that maybe gives us a little bit of hope. Is that uh, Colleen Atwood is going to be doing the the costuming on the show, and and she's done uh, all the costumes on Arrow and the Flash. No, well, well, pro- there's actually still a possibility to end up in the Arrowverse. They just haven't made up their mind on that yet. I would like to see it end up in the Arrowverse because the DC television universe is extremely well connected and coherent and good Most of the, <laughs> except the for gotham is, and constantine uh, and the upcoming teen Titans show no but the teen titans is going to be in the arrowverse is it not yeah it's they it's, are open to it they've said but it doesn't well, mean i'm it's hoping happen. i'm hoping Several of the arrow fingers cast crossed. members have also said that they would like to cross over with the non-network shows but um well, yeah, I mean, the, like the, the Arrow actors want to be that character on everything, right? Continuity. Can you blame be them? <laughs> I liked uh, um, David Ramsey, who plays John Diggle on Arrow, had a really interesting thought of how he would love to do a uh, crossover, not with Gotham, but to have uh, Bruce Wayne be a character in the series, not Batman. It's just with the League of Assassins being such a major part of the story right now, he thinks it would be really great to have Bruce Wayne just kind of cameo as someone who sees Oliver fighting Raish and it gives him second thoughts about being an assassin. <laughs> well, that was kind of okayishly clever. Okayish glee clever? No. I've never even watched that show, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there's uh so maybe not necessarily too carnival of sadnessy, but um yeah, there, there, there could be some goods in there. There could there could be some good. And 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 uh based on DC's track record with their television shows, at least uh 
two of the more established ones right now, uh, being the Flash and and Arrow, the ones um, and the, the one that doesn't budget, deserve it. actually, like if you right, about it. which is which is weird. That's but also me. awesome. Um, we might have some good news coming out of that. So, uh, but, be on the lookout for the Supergirl series, which we can expect to be hitting CBS this upcoming fall. Oh boy. Well, if anyone's wondering, though, don't worry. There's actual real life sadness for the DC Carnival, and I brought a heaping <laughs> helping of it. Oh boy. <laughs> um, so uh, the first one uh, Trey reported on earlier um, is a uh, is um, a bit of an of a rumor, unsubstantiated as far as we know right now, but we thought we'd bring it up because how can you not get a laugh out of this Zack Snyder might want a grim dark green lantern movie hold hold on do you, listen do you, do you hear that sound it's <laughs> <laughs> well to be fair yeah. he just wants a grim dark green lantern in general yeah it's we're not gonna get well I mean we've so already just established Kyle Rayner <laughs> I wish. I wish, but did... did no, I don't what, wish. I don't want to open a refrigerator on screen. Oh, well... <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I like Kyle Rayner. I just don't like that. The creator of him is from Eau Claire. That thing that happened really? in Kyle Rayner's run. <laughs> what? Kyle Rayner? No, I love Kyle Rayner. What's wrong with Kyle Rayner? No, I'm, I'm, awesome. I, need to, I need to look that up, because I... I don't know that I necessarily believe Trey on that one. I, uh, what? I'm looking at it. I'm Wikipediaing it right now. About what? Uh, Ron Mars. Oh, that the creator of uh, Kyle Rayner's from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Or oh, okay. There. Yeah, no. Um, no, I really do like the character of Kyle Rayner, but you know, with our luck, it would be Hal Jordan again. It'll be it, Hal know, Jordan it's, with Kyle Rayner's like but, fridging story. <laughs> I'll be, of course. Well, I did not realize Eau Claire, Wisconsin, had that claim to fame. Well, they had a whole thing up about him in the McIntyre Library for a while. Oh, like a whole display about Green about Kyle Rayner in the McIntyre Library for like um, two months. That's awesome. That's yeah. cool. So. That's. But well, yeah, I mean, over a decade ago. But still. I mean, I can I can see how you can make Green Lantern grim dark. I mean, it's it's there. Well, it's the point of the character is hope. Hope is where the green power comes from. You can't have a hopeless, <laughs> bleak, dark movie. No, but you and well, have... maybe you can't. Okay, Zach Snyder I'm can. not uh, stupid enough to write The Dark Knight Rises, so perhaps, no. maybe, if David S. Goyer is writing it, then yes, we can do that. But well, I, I can see how it can be dark, at least in the terms of subject matter that he's fighting. I mean, you've got the Green Lantern, the, 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 the thing you have going for the Green Lantern Corps is, the, or Lantern Corps is that you are, they are spread out all across the universe, and so there's all sorts of things they could be dealing with. I mean, a range of issues. Which which can be tackled and and be beaten by hope, um and and whatnot. But so that's not what grim dark ever means. I, I mean, know, but I'm it, I'm giving it the benefit of I'm the sorry, doubt. Technically, here. technically, Zack Snyder won. He said he wanted a dark, gritty Green Lantern. Oh well, which whatever I reinterpreted as grim dark. But that's still stupid. It, it because is stupid. you can't you can't do. How are you going to do gritty when half the crap the guy deals with are things that he imagines and get built through his magic ring of laser lights? Okay, and no one, please, no one in the audience start talking about how the ring isn't actually magic. I know, it's space science, whatever. It, it's magic. I it's, just... Yes. Yes. I mean, but if you have a grim dark green lantern, you can't make his ring do stupid things. For all things, intents which... and purposes. It's... His ring you would can't be serious. Have Batman He's... paint the whole room yellow, <laughs> which is the only good thing to come out of that version of Batman. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, like that version of Batman also painted his teeth yellow. So, I mean, <laughs> he was huffing fumes like no one's business, and probably ingested that paint. Hopefully, the unfinished uh, ass bar ends with crazy Steve Batman dying of paint poisoning. 
You know, if he had his mouth open, the Green Lantern would still have a route to his internal organs. Mm-hmm. Or... You know, he didn't turn his oh, heart gr- yellow. Or if Green Lantern were to, per se, step outside, he could, you know, pick something up, smash the place that got painted yellow, and lo and behold, all his problems are solved. Right. <sighs> well, he still has the problem I hate that he's in that Bell. comic. Oh, yeah, right. Because it's a Frank Miller comic, and if you're not Batman, you're just completely useless in Frank Miller's <laughs> universe. God, yes. I hate Miller. Like, well, okay, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think a grimdark Green Lantern is stupid and dumb, but I hate Hal Jordan, so bad things happening to Hal Jordan actually kind of makes me happy. Inside. Well, see, see, you so could, you can make it, it, you can make it grimdark and have Hal Jordan be there by having Hal Jordan be the Spectre. There you go. Hal Jordan just gets shot in the head at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> if it's and Parallax, Hal movie. Jordan getting his ass kicked by uh, Kyle Rayner, I'm okay with that. That's good. Perfect. Man, do I really hate the Silver yeah, Age characters. You, you are not a fan of... <laughs> Trey does not hide his disgust and hatred for it. Because I, really, silver... I, really Trey... I really hate the reinterpreted ones. Because, like, I still love Wonder Woman. I love I love the Golden Age. Like, well, yeah. To an extent. You, you can't not yeah. love it. I mean... I love, I love Batman. I love Superman. And, but, like, when it comes to, like, Barry Allen who decided to become the Flash and call himself the Flash after reading a comic about Jay Garrett. <laughs> Garrett, and literally, like, he picked up a Flash comic and said, oh, I should call myself the Flash. <laughs> uh, it's just, you know, it's uh, for some reason, the two who were reinterpretations, uh, Flash and, and Green Lantern, I don't like the original incarnations. I just don't. I, it's true. I hate Barry Allen way more than I hate uh, than I hate Hal Jordan. But I, I don't know. Let's just bring that Deadpool guy back and have him play Green Lantern again. Right, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan yes. Re- oh my god. He's he's gonna be busy uh, busy filming, filming Deadpool? the Deadpool movie. Yeah, Deadpool movie. In Deadpool. Vancouver right now. Well, oh let's god. move on to happier territory. This Did is. He- <laughs> Is this territory. really happier? I mean, there's still... We still have one piece of Carnival of Sadness to play. I'm not happy about this. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. I blocked um, it out. Potential Justice League villain. And when I first heard this, I thought this was in relation to Supergirl, but I guess not. Potential villain for the Justice League movie is Brainiac. Ooh. Because we need another killer super robot computer in the way of Age of Ultron. Well, what we need is a killer cyborg, like an uh, android robot, uh, fighting a collection of superheroes who are all brought together to form a team. Right? Can I at least say that I can feel for DC on this one in that Marvel has kind of beat them to the punch on their two, honestly, their two best villains for the Justice League. I mean, they're... I mean, really, Thanos what? and Darkseid Dark are the same Side, dude. Yeah. Well, here's uh, the thing. Actually, when I watched Avengers the first time, my brain got Thanos and Darkseid's names mixed up. So <laughs> I went home from that movie calling Thanos Darkseid. <laughs> but, I mean, that just goes to show how similar they are, because they're the same dude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Essentially. See... See, I'm just mad Justice League dropped the ball and you could have had Gorilla Grodd be the villain and had Andy Serkis be doing a whole bunch of work. <laughs> Plan of the Apes crossover. Right? No, it would have been great. And Andy Serkis would have gotten more work. Justice League versus the Planet of the Apes. Someone get on this. No. Um, <laughs> like, I get that's... That's really the only other thing I wanted to point out there is just that poor, poor DC. I mean, they're big... And again, Brainiac and Ultron, admit their motivations are completely different. But yeah, yeah, it's it's just like Trey said, you know, robo yep. cyborg android against team. It's uh, Brainiac is a long established Superman villain. It's okay, so the the movie it's it's going to be split into two parts, but he, the best part about the Brainiac leak is that executives 
f uh, from Warner Brothers, when looking at the script, thought that the script was too complicated for people to understand. They said comic book fans would be able to figure out what was happening, but no one else in the audience would. <laughs> so we don't know for sure what that means. We means it's too complicated for an executive. <laughs> Whether or not that translates to actually too complicated for the viewing public, we have no idea. We have no clue. But it means that the movie right now, the the, the studio heads thinks is indecipherable. Oh, boy. And, again, while they've made all these nice announcements, if uh, Batman vs. Superman fails, none of There's, it matters. None of this yep. will happen. Yep. I, I'm actually a little happy that Wonder Woman was crammed into uh, Batman vs. Superman just because at least it puts Wonder Woman in a movie for once, even if it flops. That's we will true. have like at least a official representation of Wonder Woman actually occurring on film, even if it's for like five minutes. <laughs> oh boy. Oh freaking boy. I was trying to forget about this section. Which is why I tried to move on early. Too late. It happened. We talked about it. Brainiac's going to be the villain. It. We have Brainiac. to run. We have to run from the DC Carnival of Sadness. Is there any hope? There is Anything hope. at all? Oh. Why there, is there hope, there is Trey? Hope because uh, Yahoo has announced that March 17th is October 19th this year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. Community returns... Tuesday, March 17th, and it's, uh, it's a very happy day. They put out a nice little announcement on Yahoo screen. Uh, all the, all what, the actors like basically mentioned it, right? Or they, they all were well, in the video? Well, they did a compilation video of all the actors talking about it, including Padgett Brewster, who you may remember from Criminal Minds, yeah. is who's joining the cast. She had a but cameo I in uh, Season 5, although it's yet to be stated whether or not she's playing the same character. Uh I love her. She's amazing. Yeah. She's, also she's in my favorite Chris's... animated series. I know, right? She's a, she's Chris's wife in... Uh... <laughs> in Dan Versus. Dan Versus. A show that more of you people should be watching. So, to, to carry it on through here, that they're going to premiere two episodes on that Tuesday, March 17th, with a new episode released every following Tuesday on Yahoo Screen, which is, again, available for free for everybody. Yay. You can watch it on your computer, on Roku devices, and several other things, like any iOS device. So it's not on Apple TV, but it's on iPhone and iPad. So if you ha if you have an Apple TV, I'm betting you have an iOS device. Because why the <laughs> heck were you buying an Apple TV instead of something else? Uh, <laughs> so you can mirror it to the screen on those. But, uh, yeah. It's, That's very uh, exciting. I'm good with that. No, it's it's pretty great. I'm I'm really excited about this new season because it is the sixth season, which means we'll have at least gotten as far as Cougar Town. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, March seventeenth is October nineteenth this year, and if you don't understand that reference, go um go watch Community. Eh, it's okay. Yeah, watch a lot of Community and not understand the reference because it's never mentioned in the show. <laughs> well, well if, the if show you watch, proper. that's true. It's not within the show, but I remember the promo that they put out on NBC. So Yeah, so before season, season four was supposed to premiere October 19th, and then it didn't. And so the Community cast put out a video about October 19th. That's, that's pretty much the story. It's yes. really it, out of context. It's it's not quite as exciting as it was back then. But, no, but no. it's going to be good. But anyway, now you understand, and you're a better human as a result. And you'll be an even better, better human, human if you watch time. Community. Damn straight. You, you'll a human being, in fact. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, because that I mean, is there's... the name for Community fans is human beings. That's. <laughs> It that is. is the best mascot for a school ever, incidentally. <laughs> That's, oh, man. The Greendale human being. <laughs> All right. All right, uh, well, I don't know if we have too much more to cover there. We might as well continue. Yeah, for... no. yeah. We may as well so, continue. But speaking, speaking of things that are coming back, 
um, after people thought they might have been dead. Um, it just so happens that Community was dead for less of a time than than this was. Um, everything 90s is new again because uh, the X-Files is pretty much guaranteed to return. Yes. That's right. Fox is right now in talks. Jillian Anderson is on board that she wants to reprise her role as Dana Scully. David yeah, Duchovny has said, "Yeah, I would definitely be. Uh, I would definitely be Fox Mulder again." So, because they've uh, had and, so much to do since then, and I mean, Fox executives uh, have openly admitted numerous times that they are discussing the possibility of an X Files event uh, sometime in the near future, and it's more than likely going to happen because series creator Chris Carter has also said he has plans to try and bring it back. Well, this one's interesting because it's Fox, the network that brought the that like started this process. Where it's like saying they want to bring back the X Files. Yeah, um, and then, and then it just happened which, that Julian Anderson said, "Yeah, I'd love to do it." And then David Duchovny said, "Sure, I'd do it too." Well, Julian Anderson's just working everywhere. Like, wasn't she, she yeah. on, was she on think, Hannibal or was something else? I think she did Orange Is the New Black too, didn't she? No, no. no. But she has The Fall, which is a British series in which she does a fake accent the whole show but okay the fall i actually really don't like because <laughs> it's like i was like this is like every depressing british crime drama trope without anything really great that's right i didn't like it just as depressing as broad church without any of the charming characters oh <laughs> pretty much but uh, no um, this is the, the the announcement about the X Files coming back is pretty big because it's go- not going to be a reboot. It is going to pick up where we were left off with um, X Files. I, want to, I want to believe. Okay. Yeah, the movie right. that came out probably I, I would say ten years ago. No, um, was, was it longer? It was pretty ago than recent. That? It came out. It was while I was in college. I know that much. I lived in Eau Claire, but I was with Krista. So between 2006 and 2010? 2008 is when it came out. Hey, yeah, I have the window one, right. Though. Yeah. So, I mean, less than 10 years ago uh, this came out, and the uh, apparently what Fox would like to do is they would like to pick up the series from after that and make it a continuation of the show. Yeah, and uh, it would it would end up probably being a limited series because Dave Coveney has said he doesn't want to do like a like full twenty episode season. Um, it would probably be something similar to what they did with twenty four with like a thirteen episode, you know, limited series. Mini art, yeah. Mm, well, okay. now what's what's to say that if does this doesn't do well, Fox says, well, okay, we can retire these two characters, um, and this would be a good opportunity to maybe bring in a whole new uh, cast of of people. Yeah, what's Robert Patrick doing? Yeah. Well, it, do you guys remember the last couple seasons of the X Files? Yeah, with the, the other guy, the with, with Doggett and Reyes, one played by Robert Patrick played Doggett, and then Reyes was Monica Reyes was played by the actress who played Jed Bartlett's oldest daughter on The West Wing. I remember name, not I liking remember. Doggett. That's yeah. A long time ago, they're really not doing anything right now. I mean, like literally. I, I, well, hold on, Robert Patrick. According Wait, to Robert uh, Patrick's on Scorpion, he is, and and he's okay. Also, so he definitely needs something better to do. He's then. also <laughs> going to be. He's also in the uh, the Dust Till Dawn TV series that's um out uh oh, yeah, now. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, I forgot about that. I yeah, he's he's in it. He is. Weird. That's too bad. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so what I love about Fox is they said uh, they want to break the X-Files. They also want to bring back Prison Break, but they can't because both the actors are occupied with Flash. Yep, they're both on the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they got out of prison and then they became super criminals. I mean, it makes perfect sense. There already it's, is a continuation. And... It's, it's in the same universe, yeah. Yeah, totally. Easy. but No, I, I'd be... You know what? I'd be. I'm okay with this. I'm excited to see the X Files come back because then I can finally do my uh, my uh, my Mulder cosplay that I said I was going to be doing. How long ago was this? I don't know. 
been a while okay. since I wanted to do it. I, and I now it'd be the current. X-Files. Honestly, I don't know how much I'm excited about it coming back. It's such a product of 90s paranoia, where we lived in kind of a a world where, like, a government... I don't know. The, the rise of the internet, I think, pretty much... I mean, is is what made that the the internet was really making it making its appearance in the nineties, well, and so you had a lot of people exchanging that information in that way, and so the Exiles was there to be like, yeah, you know, well, you know no, what I mean? it's okay. So I was, I'm like nine years older than you guys, so like I ran a really popular conspiracy website before nine eleven. <laughs> I want to be I clear that you're not a truther. Um. No, actually, that's why I shut it down. Because I got tired of the truthers. Oh. Um, it's like, because it's all fun when it's about whether the moon landing was faked. You know? <laughs> Which it wasn't. Moon right. landing was real. But, <laughs> like, guys arguing about that is fun. Guys arguing about the Roswell crash is entertaining. And, and uh. you know, not really, like, a big deal for the record Trey I'm 100% with you because I used to look for conspiracy theorist websites and I would get a kick out of them like just because I needed a laugh and well and unfortunately we also found out how racist some people were yeah so it just got not fun anymore so I shut down the site it was darkconspiracy.com um yeah it's pretty big and, and now, maybe maybe you should bring it back now that the X Files is no! coming. We can, no, we can no, it's a very bad idea. We can we can. I make, don't know who even owns that domain name anymore. It's probably somebody awful. Yeah. Chances are. Chances Indeed. Oh boy. Are. So well, no time, no we'll time. We'll see how that goes. But uh, but we we should be looking forward to the X Files. Almost guaranteed to come back. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll reserve. I don't know. I'm not. I say it. bring it on. Bring it on. Let's uh, let's move on to something else. I guess in the sci-fi world, <clears throat> little bit of funsies. Um, we have a new co-writer for the upcoming Star Trek three-ish. <laughs> yeah, I like that we've got that the ish is a constant thing now. Well, you uh, know, it, it it makes sense. It just does. Um, but we're we're welcoming a guy who's been with the franchise for a couple films now, but has been a fan for his whole life, from what I understand. Yes, Simon Pegg will apparently be co-writing Star Trek Three ish, whatever Whoa. it may be about. And I'm actually really excited for this, f- frankly. Um. Peg actually does care about Trek and nerddom, just really nerddom in general. And he's shown an ability, he's shown a great understanding of sci-fi genres when he spoofed them in various movies he's been in. I think that he well, and could... and co-written. And co-written, yes. And so why can't he... I don't see why we wouldn't trust him with doing Star Trek. I, I'm willing to bet he could put, pull out something really good. I mean... Again, I could be wrong, but yeah, and he's, no, uh, I have I have faith in Peg. He's co-writing it with uh, Doug Jung, J U N G. I'm not sure how to say his name. I'm assuming it's Jung, and I'm going with it. Let's do it. Yeah, uh, Doug Doug Jung though is like he's got a prior um, relationship with Paramount, but he like he's known for like the TV series Dark Blue. Like he does police procedurals. Hmm. That's so, weird. CSI but, Star Trek. But honestly, it probably could just be because Peg needs a co-writer because of time. Probably. I mean, and you know, it's you need a guy to write interior bridge. Ensign walks up to Kirk and says, "Sir, <laughs> there's something on the scanner." Indeed. So, and 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 Peg can do like. Like, even though Peg's primarily written comedies, even when you take a look at World's End and Shaun of the Dead and, uh, like, Hot Fuzz and Paul and any episode of Space, there's a lot of heart to all of it. 
So even though it's comedy, there's a lot of interpersonal drama and understanding of human dynamics. And once again, like, they're not... It's not space balls. It's not condescending or putting down the sci-fi genre. It's reveling in it. it. It completely understands it and enjoys being part of it. He's one of us. Mm-hmm. And also at, screw at space the very balls. least, oh. at the very least, anything has to be better than Orsi writing it. Because yes. I realized, you know, J.J. Abrams gets a lot of blame for the stuff wrong with Star Trek Into Darkness, but... If you go to JJ, if you look at really how JJ Abrams was never really a Star Trek fan, and he relied heavily on Orsi and Kurtzman for Star Trek knowledge. Right. So anytime anyone really acts out of character, can I really blame Abrams for knowing that it was out of character when his writers should have taken care of that to start with? Yeah, it, it's not his job. I mean, I. I... I know that that's going to offend some hardcore fans, but it really isn't his job to be a fan of these characters. Now, to know the characters that he wants to tell a story about, yeah, that probably, in fact, is his job. But still... Right, but if you've got a guy working with you who, mm -hmm. like, is presenting himself as an expert on these people, you trust him a little bit more. And there's lots of stuff, though, that's still Abrams' fault. Abrams should have looked at some of the like sex, the sexism issues with the like, representation of female characters. That's on Abrams. Mm -hmm. That's entirely on Abrams. But that's why I'm still hopeful about Episode Seven for Star Wars because he's a huge Star Wars fan and knows it himself. Where I Into Darkness was a garbage mess. Right. No the argument Star out of me Trek on that. Product one. worse than Into Darkness is five. Undiscovered country, right? No, no, no that's, that's Final no. Frontier. Man. No, Final Five's the Final five. Frontier. Wow. Undiscovered Country is my favorite it's Star Trek one. movie. That's that one was... of the better movies. It's the Nicholas sick. Meyer one. If Nicholas Meyer directed the movie, it's good. That's six and two. Yes. I had my things. Uh, I had them swapped around again. Three hours of sleep. The two yeah. best ones, really, were the Nicholas Meyer ones. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So. Yeah, it... <laughs> I don't know. It, it's pretty much... It, it should be... I think that the, it could be take the series in a better direction. I'm still not sure about this new director, but... Well, Justin Lin is perfectly good. He's, you know... The, the, the he's a good visual starship, director, the which starship is really starship chases are going to be off the hook. <laughs> well, no, they are. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I'm I know, really I'm, I'm being serious, to too. Like, it's... It's, you know, as long as there's meat in the script, which I think there will be because of Simon Pegg, right. then Justin Lin can take that and turn it into something beautiful. And, you know, because it's... The performances in the Fast and Furious movies aren't terrible. It's just it's a really thin script. Like, we know Vin Diesel's a good actor. Right. Ever since Iron Giant, everyone has known that Vin Diesel is a good actor. They just forget. Just and and, and, and the other hired just to fold his arms. He he gets to stand there and be a grumpasaurus. I mean, it's 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 pretty <laughs> pretty easy for him to do. <laughs> but that's the other thing is that these the these Star Trek reboot movies have had a fantastic. Their cast are, is fantastic. All of them are really good. So, like. The problem has never been the cast, and yeah, I really do agree that it's been the writing that has been the problem, that has been holding these characters back, and this could be an opportunity for them to really give us a good Star Trek movie. I'm I'm actually hopeful on this one. No, I'm, so, I'm looking forward. Because especially with, with how much of kind of a cluster, uh, you know what, that it's been up to this point with Star Trek 3-ish. Um, with the change of directors, with the script, like, not really getting done or figured out um, or anything. Uh, hearing that, you know, that, that they've got a pretty decent director and that now Simon Pegg is going to co-write it, I, I'm a lot more at ease about 3 and knowing that it's already going to be way better than In the Darkness was. Uh, that's barely a compliment. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. 
So Trey, right, you so went to a you you were you were on the road this weekend. Yes, I was. I just got back. So how was let's it? Let's talk about that. I was about to actually segue, but you ruined my segue, so oh, now I'm, I'm really awkward. I'm sorry. So yeah, All your uh, fault. this weekend I went down uh, up to Milwaukee for NizumiCon four. Which was held at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design. We talked about NizumiCon last episode, last fortnight. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, I uh, had a table there. I ran a panel there. It was very exciting, very fun. It's a it's a small little con held at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design in the Third Ward in Milwaukee. And yeah, no, it was uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, like, we could talk about how they just got absorbed into Anime Milwaukee's uh, overall nonprofit structure. Mm. And, uh... We did talk about that quite a bit last time. But... Yeah, and so you can go back and listen to that and my thoughts about MO. So this is really going to be the last pure Nizumi Con. The last one really kind of organized by their, like, original organization. Because that just happened, so... Uh, but it was good. Uh, they rearranged their layout this year, which I don't think was as good. They did some weird stuff. Oh, um, they did this weird thing where they put the cosplay contest at 3 p.m., 3 that to 5 p.m. in the middle of the day. So I feel really bad for anyone who had a panel during it. But also, it meant the vendor room emptied. Like, and those <laughs> people, and the and since the cosplay contest was on the first floor, nobody came back up to the third floor where the vendor room was. The vendor room was just pretty much dead after oh. 3 p.m. It was. Yeah, it was just. I I love the guys who. Yeah, who who do it. I lo, you know I, I think they're really great people, but I think that was a mistake. That mm. I don't know why I don't know. Like it's so amazing because every previous year the cosplay contest was the finale for their convention. Like it was at six p.m. and it was like the end of the con and it worked great. This year they they put it at three in the afternoon. And it's just kind of cut short the entire event. And that's I, a, So I'm not a big fan weird, of that change. That's a that's weird kind time. Of tragic. Yeah, that's weird. Well, and but it's also like the kind of change I don't think they're going to keep doing. Like, I, because it's new management and they want to change venues and all that stuff. So I hope they just don't do that again. Um, other than that, I, I think it was, it was pretty good. Um, one of the panel rooms is a little hard to find, but that's just the limitations of the building. Um, my Nerd and Tie sponsored uh, podcasting on a budget panel where I showed people how we actually do the show. That mm. went well. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it had a whole two people in it, but there were only like a couple hundred people at the con, and I was in the panel room that was hard to find. So who knows if more than two people wanted to go to that? <laughs> well, as long as you got the message out to two people, and we've ch and you've changed their lives, Trey. That's all that counts. I did, and one okay. of them's probably even going to listen to this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. I actually hey, that's gave a, that's out quite a, a few nerd and tie cards rate. at the convention. I gave out a lot of nerd and tie cards. So, I mean, overall, it was it was a really fun convention. I had a good time. Um, my sales were pretty much obliterated by the vendor room emptying out for like three hours because after 5 p.m. nobody came back so so four hours like just being dead but you know I've I've lost more money at other cons where I made more sales so I'm not really going to complain <laughs> Works and I had for a me. really good time I had a really it's, it's all obliterated by the fact that I had a ton of fun so that's, that's what matters. I've had too. cons like that, yeah. So you should attend this convention next time it happens. Again, I I named Nizumi Con 2014 my favorite convention of 2014, and I'm gonna. And even though I like, as from a business perspective, didn't do great. This week, I will still probably put it up pretty high on my list of events f for how much fun I had. So. Cool. Right on. 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 
Right on. Right on, right on, right on. <laughs> and I think that's gonna... all we've got planned for this week. So I think it's time we look in the mailbag. Yeah, there's let's... a lot of mailbag. Das we... mailbag, yes. We do have a lot of mailbag. Why don't we... Why so, don't we... Who do we want to start with? Let's start it out then. Go ahead, man. With a, with a lovely letter from uh, Mr. Andrew Worm. Oh, hey, how's Worm the Hall of Awesome. <laughs> De- uh, subject, Mystery Men. Message, dear, ner- dear doctors, nerd and tie. I totally ah. forgot to listen to your urine review until now. In that letter, Random Ramblings Man mentioned desire for more Golden Age superheroes to be seen on the silver screen, a dream I share. In addition to Nick's correct assessment that the spirit killed a lot of the possibilities, the other major knock against it happening is that many of those old Golden Age heroes have lapsed into public domain, like the Green Llama, the original Daredevil, the original Black Widow, really any of the characters that were in the Marvel's The Twelve and Dynamite Project's superpowers. Adapting those heroes enters into major murky copyright issues, since while publication rights have lapsed, the film rights are far more dubious on them. I suppose if DC was really game, though, there's always their first wave stories? Well, um, yeah, you're, you enter this weird, the weird thing about, like, these Golden Age heroes, these classic, classic superheroes, is that the appeal for them is kind of limited right now. I mean, it, the first Captain America movie try did try to capture that feel of the classic G whiz awesomeness that was these classic mystery men. But even that one, it seems like a lot of people don't like it or they just straight up don't get it. Or even more annoyingly, they complain that it's not a well-produced movie, even though it literally has the same like plot progression format as any Errol Flynn movie. Not that I want to get too sidetracked by that, but it, it freaking does. Um, I, I, I agree with both, uh, Andrew and, uh, with, uh, Random Ramblings, man. I would love to see these Golden Age heroes represented somehow. I just don't see any studios wanting to risk it, because it, it just never pays back well for them. I mean, we go back even further, uh, I love Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow, but as far as I understand, that movie tanked. Like, I also I'm half convinced I'm the only person who saw Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. So I, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> Excellent. If you haven't seen that, go see that movie. It's awesome. But it's on Netflix Instant Streaming <clears throat> right now. <clears throat> mhm. Super worth your time. I just don't know if these I want there to be a market for these characters. I just don't know if it exists or how we could get people more open to that. Or, you know, if that's just a relic of a time that's long past. It, it's, it would be like trying to make a Scarlet Pimpernel movie now. Like, uh, or even uh, like what we saw with the John Carter movie that came out a couple of years ago. Even though... I actually most liked of, it. I didn't... I, 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 I'm not saying anything against John Carter... But the problem that it, one of the problems it faces is that it, it's going to an audience that are so used to the things that are derivative of John Carter that seeing the original seems underwhelming to them now. And it was just like that Sci-Fi Channel original movie, Princess of Mars. God damn it, idiot from the internet! What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's because Sci-Fi Channel did a version of Princess of Mars like a year or two before with some soap opera actor. That is kind of tragic it's timing. Carter. No, they did it on purpose. Oh, that's even more tragic. <laughs> like, but yeah, I mean, like you, you get these things that are derivative. I mean, like again, uh, going back to the earlier example, I mean, if you try to put out a Scarlet Pimpl- Pimpernel movie now, everyone's reaction would be, oh, well, it's a Zorro knockoff, even though that's the original version. We've been so used to the derivatives that I don't know if they're, if people have as much appreciation for the original or understand that that's what it is anymore. Hmm. But I'm also, you know, a pop... 
this is also coming from a guy who has his history degree because he wrote a 20-page study on 1940s Captain America books. So, <laughs> well, Our education system's terrible. <laughs> no. Hey. I've... It, I've heard study? I've heard the part of that. It's a good study. I've heard it's a serious study on propaganda and depictions in media and racism and there there's a lot to unpackage in that. I'm just messing with you. Um but yeah. Just shake I'm, it off, Nick. Shake it off. You know what? Here's the thing though. <laughs> if should... you're going to write a goddamn song about how people saying mean things about you doesn't bother you, the fact that you bothered to write that song in the first place proves that you can't follow your own philosophy. Me no, getting doesn't. angry about that song it's an proves anthem. that I have philosophically defeated Taylor Swift. Ha! No, it's an anthem. Yeah. <laughs> we need to move on to the next letter. Shake it off. Take it away, shake it off, uh, okay. Our next thank you for the letter, Worm. We appreciate the insight as always. The next letter comes from Langland. Langland writes Hey guys, it's been a while because I've been very, very busy in my life, and I still am. However, I want to tell a very geeky joke. Don't worry, it's G-rated. Okay, so this male robot was dating a female robot because robots are gendered. Um, the male robot asked for the They age. aren't Transformers. I would say that you don't True, stick yeah. it up with Transformers fans. You find the worst people that way. The male robot asked for the age of the female robot, but she refused to tell him her age. The male robot decided to guess this female's age. He said... You don't look to be DOS. I say you're at least Windows 95. Where's the joke? Incidentally, <laughs> I, I would love I to build it. a Windows 95 computer just to have all the awesome games that came with the OS like Ski Free or Chips Challenge. Which I think you can actually, they just released all those, didn't they? Well, I know there's a version of Ski Free that um, you can play in your web browser. Yeah, they just released a whole bunch on web browsers, like all the old DOS games and whatnot. Um, but anyway, well, that's all I got. Keep on spocking in the well, free Well, Ski Freeze, Windows 95. And, that's and Windows 95, I want to point out, and just keep had DOS 7.0 in its right? core. It had a merged kernel that was half 16-bit, half 32-bit, and that's why the operating system was a mess, because it had a dual stack thing. Frickin Trey, it has DOS okay. inside it. Trey, shake Isn't it off. It Incidentally, awesome. if you love Ski Free, you should look up Mr. Lovenstein's speed, uh, <laughs> Ski Free uh, no! speed run. It's one of the greatest <laughs> videos ever made. That's right, a Ski Free speed run. Think about that, then go watch it. Okay, let's get out of the next letter. Thank you, Langland, for the letter and the, the joke. Thank you. No. All right, moving on. I love you, Langland, um, but no. Let's, let's, I guess, moving on. This is from our old buddy, Archimize. Um, and the subject, new seasons for everyone. Hey, nerds who may substitute scarves for ties. I, I wear both, Brian, you know that. Figured after my uh, long-winded gush over Legend of Korra last time, I can give you a short, uh, I, I can give you a short one this fortnight. With a lot of nerdy shows getting renewed, I was wondering what you hope happens in the new seasons of Arrow, Flash, and Constantine. What are new villains or challenges you th uh, think our plucky DC heroes will face? That's all for now. Stay tuned as the cold month roll on through. Archimize. Um, well, I do have to throw out this last week, this uh, just a couple nights ago on Constantine, it was really cool seeing Felix Faust show up seen as it yet. the bad guy. Oh, well... I was at a con! Minor, minor spoiler. Some cool... I'll unplug uh, my a, headphone. A cool DC villain showed up on Constantine, and that was, that was awesome. Not gonna lie. Uh, right on. Tell Trey to come back. Anyway, you can come, um... You can come back, Trey. You can come back. Okay. So, Wait, um, so, so you're, you're telling me that... You're, you're telling me that every single member of the Hitman Section 8 shows up, Nick? That's so cool. It was pretty weird. Yeah. Also, the Green Here's Lantern. The thing. I don't have enough DC knowledge to get that reference. Oh, okay. 
Well, anyway, um, let's see. Look, some you want to talk about the 90s cover character Pagan, who is terribly offensive. I can have a whole discussion about that. <laughs> you want to talk about Jean-Paul Valley and when he took over the bat cowl in Batman 500. I can go on for hours about that, but not whatever you just said. Right. So, well, um, um, what would we like to see, though? Any characters? I just, I, I want Mirror Master to show up in, in The Flash. He's my favorite Flash villain. Um, and it's really weird because, like, all the rest of the rogues have, like, sort of, like, weird science behind them. And, like, it's kind of legit. But as far as anybody can tell, the Mirror Master is just magic and can jump through mirrors. I mean, <laughs> like... I just want Jack Napier to show up so he can be on on the Flash before he ever can show up on Gotham. <laughs> Gotham is is they're talking about they were like hinting at the Red Hood apparently. Yeah, I guess. No, the Red Hood's going to show well, up. Well, which you can do, uh. but you can't make every Batman villain so much older than Batman. Well, the ones he's who gonna aren't have a geriatric so much older than him are now gallery, and you're just gonna feel guilty. Like, of course, he beats up all these guys. Well, he's, he's he, twenty years younger. Well, he's still gonna make them feel guilty because now, apparently, uh, Archivist has been following the show and keeping me updated. Apparently, all the villains who are his age are his friends now. He just hangs out with them now. <laughs> Well, the he's having one makes he's sense. having little kid hijinks with baby poison ivy and baby Catwoman. It's it's got. But it's them, not baby. Pamela Isley, is it? No, no, no. And Doctor Pamela Isley is poison you know, ivy. He, Gotham's he, got a girl who likes plants. Hey, I just, that doesn't mean anything, and you know it because they're. It that is, means everything. These these writers are more than willing to change stuff up. Poison Ivy has a PhD. God, we're gonna give Trey an aneurysm for this mailbag. Brilliant scientist. He's, I've never seen Trey this upset during a mailbag. I, I've. <laughs> <laughs> Trey, what would you like to see? I would like to see Pamela Isley murder someone. <laughs> who likes plants on Gotham? <laughs> Just have for the Isley family car hit her. For the record, <laughs> I, I would like to see the Doctor Fate helmet in Constantine actually uh, come into play, and maybe actually have Doctor Fate show up. Um, and I still want Swamp Thing. I really want Swamp Thing. I want Zatanna to show up on Constantine. That'd be awesome. I'm going to watch much... Constantine tomorrow when I'm off of work. You really should, because it's awesome. I'm going to... I usually watch it. It's just I was at a convention, so I've got to catch up on all the shows from this weekend, uh, like tomorrow night. I'm relieved they, so far in the new time slot, they haven't dialed back the levels of gore that they're willing to do for the horror element, but I'm worried that that's going to get it in more trouble since it's on two hours earlier. I don't know. I'm really worried, you guys. I don't want this show to get canceled. Uh, it's 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 pretty rocky right now. I, I know. It's it's all of my my hope is pretty much lost there, but I well, still you can always out. cross your fingers that Yahoo screen picks it up. Maybe that that'd be all right. I'd watch that. <laughs> Oh, oh! Six seasons in a movie. Oh, um, which I want to point out in the show community, the <laughs> line six seasons in a movie" was first uttered about the cape. I remember that because that's right. That Abed got really into the cape. <laughs> <laughs> I almost forgot about the cape. God, I always forget show. about the cape. I, 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 was a, I remember it again. I liked it. That was a bizarre show. All right. The main so, bad guy from that keeps showing up on everything. It's a little bit of it. All right. I liked it. Who, who else? Who else? We got letters from. Thank you, Archimedes. Um. Last but not least, we have one from uh, the Random Ramblings man. 
Yes. All right. Random. I've got this one. He says, and subject is crazy rumors and first hypothetical. Hey, fellas. I hope you've all had a nice two weeks and that Fur's fully recovered from his surgery. I am. I just had my follow-up on Friday, and they were like, hey, you're good to go. So He's alive. I am alive, and my intestines aren't popping out. It's good times. Um, anyways, it seems the crazy rumors just won't let up, huh? Let's address some of them. Andy Circus role in Avengers Age of Ultron is indeed Ulysses Claw. I'm hoping this is true. It'd serve as a great lead-in for Black Panther's nemesis and a valid explanation for where Ultron sources the vibranium he uses to create one of his bodies. That would be excellent. I'm okay with that. Uh, another rumor. Uh, Mantis will appear in Avengers Age of Ultron. Yes, I want this to happen. Aside from another character normally affiliated with everyone's favorite bunch of a-holes, we get a nice link between normal and cosmic Marvel. Another rumor. Spider-Man <laughs> enters the MCU in Avengers and Infinity War. I'm iffy on this, but if it does happen, I want it to be with the Miles Morales incarnation. Then I'll be excited. Won't happen, but that would be great. It would be perfect. Yeah. Um, rumor. Zack Snyder wants a darker, grittier Green Lantern. I have my own suggestion. Just bring over Jon Stewart from the DCAU and we'll finally have a light of hope in the DC Carnival of Sadness. Christian Bale for Green Lantern. <laughs> Swear to me. Uh... Another that rumor. like uh, Christian Bale is filtered through the uh, Scarecrow serum. Right? <laughs> uh, Brainiac will be the main villain in the Justice League film. I'm treating this as a rumor because, as Nick has said, DC's cinematic lineup is shaky at best. And if it's true, bring, Corey Bur- bring back Corey Burton and I'll be happy. All right. Enough yes. crazy rumors. Let's move on to something new I'm trying out called hypotheticals. Now, we know about what the MCU has planned for the next four to five years. But what really has, hasn't been mentioned is just what the other properties they have control over, which is a lot. Uh, how, would you feel, how do you guys feel about them adapting three properties that have had mixed success previously? Blade, Ghost Rider, and The Punisher. How do you think Marvel should go about it to ensure success? All right, that's all for now, I suppose. Until next time, stay random, fellas. And P.S. Fox, don't remake Escape from New York. Don't, just don't. <laughs> I, I agree. I do have a God, first so... answer to the Marvel thing, though. Step one, leave the Punisher back in the 90s where he belongs because he's awful. Oh. Um, what? Oh, I didn't mind the Punisher oh. movies. And in the video well, game, okay, you so fed actually, people to sharks. <laughs> Punisher's not that great. <laughs> I think we should all get together and watch the Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie. Yes. <laughs> that could be a con event. I agree. We could riff it. It'd be good. It's the only the only one where he doesn't wear the skull on his shirt. Um, like, the easiest costume to get right, <laughs> literally the easiest costume well, of any. When comic they made the movie, movie, they thought it would look silly. That's, I'm not kidding. They thought it would look too silly to put a skull shirt on him. <laughs> uh, but okay, so Blade. Blade's an interesting franchise. The thing is, Blade was good. The Blade franchise Wesley was pretty Snipes good up until 3. Is the, the movies are the, the only reason, reason anyone Blade cares 3 about was Blade. Bad. The reason why Blade 3 was bad, in truth, is because Wesley Snipes pretty much refused to be on set. And so they had to keep rewriting every scene while they were going around Wesley Snipes. If he's not on camera in the shot, if you can't see Wesley Snipes' face, he's not in the room, even if he's in the scene. They they literally shot around him, oh and God. then wrote new like they gave all of his lines to the other characters, because like Patton Oswalt wrote some really interesting stuff about what happened on the set of Blade Three. It was a mess, but it wasn't a failure. Wait, had, did, did, have either of you guys seen the Blade TV series, the live-action Blade no, TV I series? No, I have not. I was aware that it existed, it w- but I never watched it. It was bad. <laughs> I, you know, I was a Blade fan, so I you know, tried it out, and I had to give up after like an episode and a half. Ouch. So, yeah. Ouch. It made Viper look like it had good production values. Uh, oh. Oh. It made Mantis look impressive. <laughs> Hey, I am making myself sound super old. I watched it Mantis, made the Nightman TV awful. series look high quality. 
It made Crow Stairway to Heaven look like the best comic adaptation ever put on television. Oh my dear God. That's Mark Dacascus right there. He's the chairman. <laughs> on Iron Chef. Oh, on the well. American Iron Chef, Mark Dacascus plays the chairman. He stars as Eric Draven in, in the Crow Stairway to Heaven. I'm not joking. That's I love that thing. guy. I watched every episode of that show when it aired. That and Team Knight Rider. The Blade series made Team Knight Rider look good. Okay, I, I'm getting it. I, I'm, I'm understanding that you do not like the Blade series. Wait, hold on, Trace. Are you saying you didn't like the Blade series? I... Oh boy! No, it was okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Oh. So, well, I, honestly, like my answer, my answer to that question, um, I don't know that there's really a lot they can they can do with with those three franchises to make them fit into the cinematic universe. I mean, they've got their their they've got it mapped out for the next four to five years, essentially, and I don't see where they could take Ghost Rider Ghost, or the Punisher Ghost Rider could be merged in. Ghost Rider, I could see working, but Punisher, I just I don't well, want him anywhere near okay. the franchise. The way, the way I could <laughs> I still see think them, we need a Punisher movie. They could work it into to the the Netflix um, series they're working on. That's okay, true. Yeah. Punisher would work in the Defenders. Punisher setting. would work in the Defenders series. You could Especially maybe, I mean, in like, the context of Daredevil. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, I could see that. I could see the Punisher showing up in that. Blade, maybe not so much. Ghost Rider. I just want to see them throw. As long as Nicolas Cage can keep playing the character, that's all I care about. Whatever. Well, <laughs> I don't want Nicolas okay, Cage. So for, and whatever. for Blade, for Blade, you have the complication of introducing vampires into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because then you've got issues. Then you've got to interact. Like, there's no way that Shield would not be aware of vampires. Yeah. And so there's a whole like layers of stuff like of dominoes that the effects that introducing a massive vampire society into the Marvel Cinematic Universe would have where Ghost Rider and the Punisher don't tip those dominoes. Yep. It's the same so, reason why we're kind of better off not having uh the X-Men in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It just Exactly. Mhm. Mm so Hopefully, Random Ramblings, man, that answers your question. You're more likely to see Ghost Rider and the Punisher show up before you're likely to see Blade even mentioned. So, yeah. Maybe someone will be reading a Blade comic. Yeah, they might do that. You <laughs> never know. That's he the can... most I'd expect to see. Yeah. <clears throat> so. And we or... all think that the Escape from New York remake is a terrible idea. Oh, yeah, I no, it's going to be awful. All right. So, we, so we've got the Vomit Hat Steve challenge now, don't we? Yes, we do. Do we? do we really? So let us move on to the Vomit Hat Steve challenge. <laughs> All right, so for those who don't know, who this is their first episode tuning in, every episode we have the Vomit Hat Steve challenge. What that is is I read a portion of a random book, and you, the challenge is for you to guess what book I'm reading from. If you, get it, if, if you write into us and get it right, you get included in the Hall of Awesome. The benefits of the Hall of Awesome include getting your name read every episode and that's it. I that's say, all the benefits I, for being in the Hall of Awesome. Yeah. We say hi. I, we say hi. You know, we do. And, also, you uh, get so to live. The, the yeah. current members of the Hall of Awesome are as follows. Archimize Zero, Rana Innocenti, Cheesy McDam, You, Krista, Slithery D, who's Worm, Shameless Otaku, The Random Ramblings Man, Core Fan, Capito, and Chris Graham. Those are the people currently in the Hall of Awesome. Now for the book. For yes. this episode, I'm actually going to finally reveal what I've been reading this whole time. For the last couple months... I've been reading from the same book. No one has no. guessed it right. Impossible. So, I am going to reveal what it was. I'm going to load it up here so I can show the the cover to the people uh, listening at home, watching at home. 
And of course, it's taking forever. There we go. It is Lost in Temptation by Lauren Royal. Mm. That looks amazing. Nice Whoa, hey, they told me they weren't going to use that photo of me. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was one of the ones I said they weren't going to use. Whatever. <clears throat> Can't. And so now, <laughs> now I've got to go get out the book for this episode. Which I will also be loading up on my tablet. So you can't see what it is. Like that one episode where I pulled a book down from my bookshelf and had it in front of the camera. Because I forgot Oops. that we're on video now. <laughs> All right. So this is the f quote. This is this is the segment of the book. I can level an enemy bulwark in a shot or two, my lord, but the dragons do not move quickly. If you can tell us what book that's from, go to nerdandtie.com, click on the contact form, and tell us the name of the book and the author. If you have anything else you want to tell us, like why you think Nick looks super fly as an animated character, mm, or why first headphones have that amazing red stripe, it's tell just, us by it's going cool. to that page. And just give us your thoughts, man. We like to know what you think, who you think, why you think, and why Nick should like the song Shake It Off. Indeed. Again, yeah, but let I us know. Will, so. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, well, guys, this has been a great episode. It's been good uh, good talking with you, as always. And uh, I don't know. I guess it was okay. Do this, do this again in another two I'm weeks? I'm wearing pants. I'll think about it. <laughs> All right. So, for Nerd and Ty, I am Professor Firsters. I'm Hi. Trey Dorn. And I'm still Nick Izumi. Good night, and have a fantastic fortnight. And remember to subscribe to us on iTunes or Stitcher. You would, Stitcher has an app for both Android and iOS. Rate and review us on both Stitcher and iTunes, because we need the credit. Please rate us on Stitcher. Good night, everybody. Keep us fucking <laughs> in the free world. Yep, that's mine. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I stole his line. All right.